Welcome to the desert. You know, for the last uh, month and a half, two months, it's gone anywhere from like 95 to 110. It's pretty hot. So you notice I'm wearing my uh, my sweatshirt again, and uh, because I woke up, it was 50 degrees this morning. So now it's time for the cold to hit the desert. And uh, I'd, actually, I think I'd much rather have it warm, but and it really can't have, I don't have anything to do with that, so. <clears throat> Welcome to Linwood Community Church, and uh, we're here again for another uh, video lesson. It's a little, little different today, and just wanted to give a shout out to my, my brother Les over here, who gave the sermon, did a great sermon, great message, and uh, had a little issue at the end, man, where just my heart, my, my, uh, my Fitbit watch, it's not really Fitbit, those are expensive, it's the knockoff. It still works. I saw my heart rate go up. I go running down there to see how he is. My heart rate went up, so, you know, I guess, uh, guess that uh, when you say you belong to a family in this church, I guess it's, uh, it's real. So, um, anyway, we're praying, praying for less, and he'll be giving his lesson today. He's doing much better. Um, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, just thank you for this. This day that we could uh, share share another video and and Lord just uh, just open the ears and and uh, and the hearts Lord and of those that are listening and ask you to bless this time in your name, Amen. Well, I did something a little different. I uh, I had a lesson all prepared yesterday and uh, decided not to do it, and it was strange why I decided not to do it, but I was home, and I was, for some reason, I was just humming a, a song, a, an old hymn, and I thought for a minute, and I said, man, how can we just, you know, I was so used to growing up uh, with these old hymns, and uh, they're ingrained from the time I was a kid, so I mean, I, I still remember the melodies and, and the songs, and so I thought I would entitle this lesson today, Why Him? So I'm going to start it off with a, uh, a famous hymn and a story that goes with it. It's called it, it Is Well With My Soul. A lot of you probably heard the story. I'll give you the, the condensed version of It Is Well With My Soul. It was written by Horatio Gates Spafford, the author who penned the hymn. It Is Well With My Soul was born in New York on 20th October 1828. It was in Chicago that he became well known for his clear Christian testimony. He and his wife, Anna, were active in their church. Their home was always open to visitors. They counted the world-famous evangelist Dwight L. Moody among their friends. They were blessed with five children and a considerable wealth. Horatio was a lawyer and owned a great deal of property in his home city. But not unlike Job in the Old Testament, um, tragedy came in great measure to this happy home. Uh, when, when, he, when his son was four years old, uh, they lost him, and he died of scarlet fever. And uh, one year later, in October 1871, a massive fire swept through downtown Chicago, devastating the city, including many properties owned by Horatio. That day, almost 300 people lost their lives, and around 100,000 were made homeless. Despite their own substantial financial loss, the Spaffords sought to demonstrate the love of Christ by assisting those who were grief-stricken and in great need. Two years later, in 1873, Spafford decided his family should take a holiday in England, knowing that his friend, the evangelist Dwight L. Moody, would be preaching there in the autumn. 
Horatio is delayed because of business, sent his family ahead. His wife and their four remaining daughters, or children, all daughters, 11-year-old Anna, 9-year-old Margaret Lee, 5-year-old Elizabeth, and 2-year-old Tanetta. On 22nd of November, 1873, while crossing the Atlantic, their vessel was struck by an iron sailing ship. 226 people lost their lives. Anna was saved, but all of the children died. Following this deep tragedy, Anna gave birth to three more children, but she and Horatio were not spared even more sadness as on February 11, 1880, their only son, Horatio, named after the brother that had died. He also died at the age of four. But Horatio's faith in God never failed. In August 1881, the Spaffords left America with a number of other like-minded Christians settled in Jerusalem, where they served the needy, helped the poor, cared for the sick, and took in, took in homeless children. Their desire was to show those living about them the love of Jesus. Rachel Spafford died of malaria on the 16th of October, 1888. Anna Spafford continued to work surrounding in the surrounding area of Jerusalem until her death in 1923. But Horatio and Anna were laid to rest in Jerusalem. It can truly be said, in the words that Stafford penned, that is well with their soul. And in that song that he wrote out of the grief of his heart about the tragedies, um, he, uh, he never once uh, faulted God, continued his... his uh, his ministry as long as he lived. And it, it's, an, it's amazing when you think of someone who has money, uh, who does have everything, supposedly, that still gives and still serves the Lord. And yet, through all of that, um, suffered a great deal. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to read you the, the actual... It is well with my soul. And just think about this family. Think about him. Um, as we, as this, this hymn is sung, and I remember singing this hymn in church and never understanding what it really meant. But so much of these hymns are right out of Scripture. So when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, Thou hast taught me to say it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, through trials sh should come, let this bless, blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross. And I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. The Lord haste the day when the faith shall be sight. The clouds will be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. Now you're going to notice that a lot of these hymns that I'm going to read to you today are uh, old, old English. This is the way they spoke back then. It doesn't mean that uh, it's, it's just proper English. That was the king's English. And so uh, when we read it, sometimes we don't understand some of the words. But uh, take the time to look at these hymns and research some of the words and the feelings. And as a kid growing up, I sang these songs without understanding. And as uh, a more mature Christian, um, these hymns are amazing. And today we, we sing a lot of praise songs in church. Uh, we actually did sing a couple of these hymns this last Sunday to the guitar with a little fast pace, but the words were the same. Um, and there are different kinds of songs. There are praise songs. There are songs of worship. There are songs of, of just gratitude uh, to the Lord for who he is. And it's, it's interesting to see how these are, are done. One of my favorite hymns, and actually it was 
My mom had two favorite hymns, and we're going to look at this one. Uh, her two favorite hymns were In the Garden and How Great Thou Art. How Great Thou Art is a, a very popular hymn. Alvis, Alvis Presley even sung it. But I want you to listen to the words again. Again, every one of these hymns are out of Scripture. These, these aren't songs that were made up to fit the day. These were songs that were made up uh, from the Holy Scriptures. How great thou art, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees, when I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, and when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. And I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. You stop and think about when you read scripture and when you hear sermons and they talk about uh, creation. Well, this, this song takes you from creation and the beautiful things that God created to the second coming, to the end. When, when he shall come back and, and uh, what a joy to the Christian's heart. That's a great thing if you're a Christian. If you're, if you're not, then it's probably not so great. And um, I want to read some scripture quickly. It's, uh, this first one is Isaiah. Isaiah 55, 8, and 9. And this goes with the very first song that, that, that we, we, we uh, read, How Great Thou Art. Um, let me read that to you. And it, how great thou art is to, to, to realize who God is and how great he really is. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways, uh, your ways, my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Again, how great thou art. We, we don't understand. We don't understand his... Uh, his awesomeness, and I like that word awesome, it's awesomeness. And then we, we, uh, we looked at uh, this next one, this next uh, song I want to read to you. Now remember, you go to church, and, I, I, and as I did, a lot of times we're like robots. We go to church, we, um, we sing the songs, we get in such a routine sometimes that we forget that we're we're there to worship. We forget that uh, who we're singing to, who we're listening about. Um, and each one of these songs has a special meaning. This one's called At Calvary. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great, and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. By God's word, at last my sin I learned. Then I trembled at the law I'd spurned, till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary. Now I've given to Jesus everything. Now I gladly own him as my king. Now my raptured soul can only sing 
of Calvary. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. That's one of the most awesome hymns ever written. In, uh, in Luke 23, 2333, I have a verse that goes along with that. I want to read it to you. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and the other on the left. Calvary is such an important part in, a, in our life, uh, in the life, in this world, in the history of the world. Because if it wasn't for that hill, if it wasn't for that cross, if it wasn't for Jesus going up that hill and giving his life, we'd all be doomed. We'd all be doomed to death and a life in, in hell. But you know, God does have that grace. He does have that mercy. And it did take place at Calvary. So when we sing hymns like this, do we mean them? Do we understand? Or do we just sing it? as part of the program for that day. third one I want to read to you is called The Old Rugged Cross. And um, another famous, famous hymn. There's a lot of people that heard this hymn that necessarily don't even go to church or aren't Christians. So it's one of those hymns that uh, from time to time People can hear it, special occasions. Um, let me read that to you. It's called the Old Rugged Cross. Of course, it's talking about the cross, Calvary. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross with the dearest and best, for a world of lost sinners was slain. Oh, that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. In the old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine, such a wonderful beauty I see. For twas on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. To the old rugged cross I will ever be true, its shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me some day to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it some day for a crown. And I picked Hebrews 12.3 uh, to read. Looking unto Jesus, sorry about that. Looking unto Jesus and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame as he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. It's not an easy thing for Jesus to do. People sometimes think that uh, he, he, he's, he's man, but he's also God, so it wasn't that difficult of a thing. The shame that he had to endure, the shame that people don't realize, setting aside that great pain that he went through. And again, this is documented history. I'm not telling you something that's not right out of history books. This part of the crucifixion, uh, the, the most well-recognized crucifixion in history, is in history books, not Christian books, but history books. And they made that long 
walk up the hill carrying the cross, uh, bleeding, uh, skin raw, uh, being spit on, being despised by the world. The shame that he carried. That shame wasn't his. He had nothing to be ashamed of. That shame was ours. And as he went up to that cross, uh, the old rugged cross, um, he gave his life for us. So when I sing these hymns and when I read some of these hymns now, I have to ask God to you know, forgive me for my uh, ignorance when I was younger, that for my routine to go to church. Sometimes we go to church and we, we almost feel it's a routine uh, that you go through. You get a bulletin and you read it and you boom, 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 you go right down. I'm not saying it's bad to be organized. I'm saying sometimes when we go to church, it's a routine. It's, it's, a, it's a show. It's not here. I'm not, I'm not saying that at my church, but I, I see churches that are laid with gold and churches that have the entertainment section where their praise team has cut many albums and many songs and uh, they're well known and, and, uh, and they put on a great show that day. It's entertainment. God died on the cross. When Jesus died on that cross, that wasn't for our entertainment. It was to save us. And so as we go through these, these hymns and these scriptures, we realize that these different hymns throughout these old hymnals, they have a message. You could preach a, me preach a message on each one of these hymns. And I often thought, I said, why, why didn't I understand why why did because it was made routine for me it's like the stories when i was in sunday school growing up we talked a little bit about that before tim and i about you know what i i just didn't realize uh, the detail that's left out when you're a kid probably because it's it's a gruesome you know um the story of david i knew the story of david and goliath I knew that David picked up those stones, got a slingshot, hit him in the head. I knew the story and fell to the ground, and, but I didn't know the detail. I didn't know that that kid picked up a sword and chopped the guy's head off. I'm sure they didn't want to tell me that when I was seven years old. They didn't want to tell me, uh, all, you know, you, we're going to talk about Samson today, but you know he was picking up hookers right and left. I'm sure you're not going to tell a seven-year-old uh, Samson's lifestyle. But I got the meaning of the story of Samson. And the meaning of the story of all of them, they were used by God. And as we grow and as we read and as we study, we realize there was a lot more detail that couldn't be shared because we, we weren't ready for it. And I want to read one more. Uh, this was a great, this is a great song. Uh, and it speaks to me because th these are the times that we're in right now. And um, my uncle used to lead the singing at one, one, one of these churches, and he was a pretty charismatic guy. And he'd get up, and, and I, don't, I don't know if he had a great voice, but I have to be honest with you, I, I never heard his voice because he was always shouting, man. He was, like, very charismatic. And, um, and, and this is one of the songs. It's called When the Roll is Call of Yonder. Now, most of you can remember when you're in elementary school, Maybe even all the way up to high school. I don't even know if they do that anymore. I don't even think they call roll anymore. But I remember them calling roll. Uh, they call you by your first name, and you raise your hand, present, I'm present today. And then you get to high school, you know, it's a little more uh, adult. They call you by your last name. You're lined up in your gym class, and they shout out your last name. Here. But you're still a role, man. Your name's in that role. I mean, they're, they're calling you because you're in class. You're there. And we don't realize this, but this song, very important song to believers. And, um, and if you're not a believer, then um, I think this song should, should wake you up a little bit. Let me read it to you. It's called, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sign, and by the way, this is Revelation. So we're, we're in this time right now, people. It's here. 
when the trumpet of the Lord shall sign, sound, and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks, eternal, bright, and fair. When the saved of earth uh, shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of his, of his resurrection share, when his chosen ones shall gather to their homes beyond the skies, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Great song. If you're not a Christian, it could be a scary song. And the reason I say that is when that, when that roll is called and your name's not on it, um, you're out of luck. You don't have the opportunity to make a, uh, a second effort. Um, I truly, truly believe that my name's on that roll. It's on that roll. Uh, I'm going to read this passage to you. I mean, it's a, it's not long, but it. It's the, it's the day of the Lord. It's the day of the Lord. And um, you can find it in, well, it's in, the, it's in the fifth chapter of Thessalonians. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. This is Paul, right, the Thessalonians. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. They shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night or darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do. Let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. Let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, the helmet of hope and salvation, for God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we're awake or asleep, we should live together with him. thought it was appropriate when I started reading and going through all these hymns, and I, went, I must have went through 20... And I got to tell you, I felt pretty good going through these hymns and just remembering uh, the songs and the words and the actual music to these songs. And, um, and every single one, um, down to the songs that were dedicated to America, God Bless America, down to the patriotic songs, um, y'all had a message. Message was clear. Message was uh, a, war a warning. The message was a gift. Uh, the message was for everyone uh, that's ever walked the face of this earth. And it's been the same for everybody. So I got a question. I'm closing with this question. And I hope that you pick up, and this is just an ordinary uh, hymnal, an old hymnal, the songs are. Most of them are written in 1800s, 1900s. Uh, and you probably recognize a lot of them because even though the music's changed, the words are the same in a lot. And um, I hope you pick up one of those old hymnals and read through them because there's a message on every page. Uh, and it's always the same message. The message was taken out of, out of Scripture, the Word of God. I'm going to close with an important question. 
where will you be when heaven's roll is called? My brother from another mother, Pete Tuyasa Sopo, always ends his, his global prayer chain with an invitation. And I think it's important uh, because I could share the word of God with you. I could um, get up and walk away and say, oh, I did my job. Uh, because the Holy Spirit's really the one that, that does the work. But I want you to know that um, it doesn't matter how smart you are, how well you know the Bible. It doesn't matter if you're a, a great student. None of that matters. Because this Bible was written for everybody. It wasn't written to the theologians. It wasn't written to the scholars. It was written to the world. It was written to God's people so that they can understand it and grasp it and realize that it's very simple. After everything that's studied in this Bible comes down to simply this. It comes down to saying, do you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins? And do you accept him as your personal Savior? It's as simple as saying, Lord, forgive me for what I'm doing, what I've done, and probably what I'm going to do. Uh, but come into my heart. Be my personal Savior. Put me on that roll so that when the end time comes, my name's called on that roll. And, and we're so fortunate in this country right now. We've got so many chances, so many second chances to do this. Uh, this Sunday, I read the little insert in our, in our bulletin, and, and um, I was crushed, man. I mean, I, I was crushed because I'm so fortunate to be in America. As stupid as we've become, um, 1,400 people in uh, northern Africa killed for their faith, killed for preaching the gospel. And here in this country, we might think it's, you know, things are, are bad, but we still have this opportunity. We can come to you on video. You can come visit us on Sunday live. Uh, we have our Bible studies up. Um, we have Wednesday night prayer meetings now. If you just want to come pray, um, that we are still able to do that without fear of death, penalty of death. And, and I just want to ask you, you know what? Get your name on that roll. Ask Jesus into your heart. Start li living the life that God wants you to live. Because the bottom line is, at, at when it is all over, and COVID's already taken many lives. How many of those people were Christians? How many people didn't believe? Because it's over for them. And, and when we take our last breath, there's no second chance. So that's why I ask you, you have the opportunity at this moment uh, to let them into your life. And it's as simple as that. Don't, don't be ashamed. How can you be ashamed of the person that created this world? And it's amazing to me that people are ashamed to even speak his name to people and he created each and every one of us. So I'm going to leave you with that. Pray that you will um, look into your own heart and, and ask Jesus to come in and be your Savior. Closing prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for time to share. Share some, some songs out of your hymns, out of your, the old, they call them the old hymns, but it doesn't, it doesn't get any older than the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You've, you've always been there. The music might be different. The instruments might be different. But those words are the same. Words of joy, words of praise, uh, the words of thanks. And when we come to church and we worship you and we honor you and, 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 our, and our church family, Lord, I just ask you not to make it routine for us different every Sunday, something different every Sunday. Speak to our hearts every Sunday, whether it's through song, through prayer, or through the message given that day. We ask that you open your word to us, and we thank you for this in your name. Amen. The beating of my heart is deafening, but I'm still listening in the silence after the storm. Will bring me home. I can hear more than ever. Taking me to places better. Hope that lasts forever. I'll put the peace.
pieces together Put the pieces together Put the pieces together Together